I'm gonna step in the water. There's no way I'm gonna make this happen. Ah! Ah! I knew it. Hey guys, how we doing? And uh, welcome back to another Pentax K70 video. Today, yeah, we're out in the wilderness. It's a place called McCormick's Creek State Park in Indiana. And uh, I, I, I was here when I was a teenager, but I haven't been back. And I wanted to get the, uh, the Pentax K70 out here and uh, give, it, uh, give it a run through. I've got a polarizer filter on there too, and we'll talk about that. You really need a polarizing filter when you're out in a situation like this. So when I first got here, there was uh, somewhat of a crowd here and uh, they, they've all vanished. And I was trying to take photos while there were people here and it wasn't working, but, uh, but they're all gone now. So we're gonna get started here. I do appreciate you, as I said, checking this out. This is the, the Pentax K70. It is a waterproof camera, water resistant camera, weather resistant camera, weather sealed camera. In other words, if you drop it in the water, it's gonna be okay. Well, I mean, you don't wanna do that. I mean, you really gotta dry it off and everything uh, if you end up plunging in the water but um, I'm not gonna plunge my $1,200 uh, Canon EOS RP in the water, my $1,000 Ricoh GR3, um, uh, but this was all under 500 bucks for the 18 to 135 lens and the, the camera itself, which is a tough camera. Not only is it built well, the, uh, the electronics in this camera rival most cameras in the $1,000 range, and I, I, I challenge you to go out and, and check that out and look this camera up. And it, it's a very, most Pentax cameras very well built. They just don't have a great reputation. They don't have a lot of marketing, um, but they're, 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 I think they're better than Canon. Uh, you know, that, that's my opinion, but whatever. So um, we had a video out on a small town. This is a video on uh, shooting these, uh, this little waterfall here. And there's so many shots here you could get that it's just, it's amazing. But anyway, we're gonna get a handful, good representative, and let you see what this thing can do at 18 millimeters, 135. Uh, also cranked all the way up to, I think I had it up to F32 at one point. So uh, give you a lot of depth of field. Usually that's gonna be the weak part of the lens. You wanna keep your exposures between F8 and F13. Usually that's the sharpest part of the lens. But if you're not a professional and you're just shooting for fun and you're shooting for Instagram and Facebook and stuff that most of us shoot for, then crank it all the way up to 30th of a set or uh, 130 sec. What I'm trying to say is F32, F28, something like that, and get you a lot of depth of field. And again, we'll talk about that here. So again, guys, uh, stick with me here and we'll see what we come up with. I do appreciate you checking it out. So anyway, there's our waterfall. Hope you can see it. Um, we're lucky we don't have a lot of people here, but uh, that's what we're looking at. And so uh, I don't know how well you can see this. So let's see what we get here at one second, F22. And we're at probably, oh, that turned out very nice. Uh, looks like we're and we're at 200 ISO. So at 200 ISO, and again, that's a very wide shot. So I'm gonna zoom all the way in. Let's go into just about a 50. So 50 would be at 1.5, it would be a 35 millimeter equivalent of about 75 to 80 if you're on a full frame camera. So let's go ahead and we'll zoom in on that. Take that shot. And I guess we'll go ahead and get two. Uh, you can see the way my tripod is. I'm not sure what that's showing. You can see the way the tripod is uh, in the water. And I didn't bring my boots. I really should have. And I may go back and get those. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out to 35. So we'll give a 35 here. And we're not focusing up close, so I'm not sure. Um, so, so that's what we get there. The one last thing I'm going to do here is uh, tilt this so we can get some vertical. And we'll see what we come up with. This tilt screen, as you see here, is very awesome for that. Uh, okay, excellent. Okay, now I'm going to tilt down a little bit. Now we've got these rocks and things. So again, I'm focused right on this rock right about here. People are starting to come in here. So I'm going to have to go ahead and change places. But I like, I like what we've got so far. I can't really tell. All right, so I think we're going to to change our location here and uh, see what we come up with so camera off whoops camera off okay so much for our cloudy day it's supposed to be cloudy today thunderstorms maybe that's why I came come on okay so trying to keep both these cameras going because I'm not sure what you can see out of each one hopefully my uh, recorder is still on my audio whoops there we go 
hopefully the audio is still on. So what we've got going on here, guys, change positions. I had to wait for some people to come and go because the kids are out of school today. I didn't realize that. But uh, I don't know if you can see this or not. We got a really cool, well, obviously you can see the waterfall here. We got some people standing there, so I'm just gonna go ahead and get a shot here. Maybe they'll stand still long enough to get this shot of a, believe about a two second exposure. Yeah, we'll see how that comes out. So I'm at two seconds, uh, ISO 100, and I am about F22, give or take. And um, usually the sharpest part of your lens is gonna be between, uh, say, F8, F11, something like that. But, the, um, uh, but if you wanna get a lot of depth of field, which is what I'm trying to do here, not really sure why, I'm not even sure what's, uh, like if this, uh, these rocks are in view or not, but, uh, but the, um, you know, you, the higher you go on your aperture, higher the number, the more depth of field, the more things will be in focus for you. And I'm focusing, there's a rock right there underneath the waterfall, and that's what I'm focusing on. So we'll give this, again, a two second exposure. So there's a shot at about 35 or so. Let me go to 18 and just pull this bad boy all the way in. Again, I'm kind of just cheating on the focus there and focusing right there at the falls itself. Two second uh, delay, that's very important so that everything, there's no shaking. Okay, I tell you what, let's go ahead and go for a vertical. I don't shoot a lot of waterfalls, so this is all kind of new to me. I've shot a few, but I wanted to get out today and make sure and get this one shot. Called McCormick's Creek, so let's see what we get here. Okay, awesome. And again, I keep going at two seconds. Um, let's go ahead, there's nobody coming, so I'll go ahead and fire off a shot and show you what it'd look like if you froze everything, which I don't like to do. Let's go all the way up to one, well, let's go up to 500th of a second, and we'll pull this bad boy all the way down to about F5, so we've got to go up on the ISO because it is not having anything to do with 100. Okay, is this, yeah, this shooting 6400 right here. Oh, uh, here comes some people. Oh, okay, dang it. Um, and I've still got, I'm gonna get one more closer to the falls, so this may take a minute, but uh, we've got one more. I wanted to get it far away like I did, now I wanna get up close, so we'll have to wait. How are you guys doing? All right, so we're going to take a quick break here and then we'll get up underneath the falls here in a second and see what we come up with. Man, this is where I really could have used my boots because it's just a little too deep right there. I could have got right there and had a killer shot. So let's see what we can do here. And hopefully no people roll up here just as soon as I get this. I'm going back down to 200 way up to f22 that means we'll have to go down to uh 1.6 let's go to two seconds again i like that too okay let's see what we get here okay we're very fortunate right now not to have any people around so i've not fallen in yet i'm not stepped in yet either so back this up this is at uh, 18 millimeter Focusing just in front of the rock. Okay, that's at two seconds. Let's go back horizontal. I mean, you can get a lot vertical, but I mean, uh, although, there we go, 18, wide open. And I'm assuming these are all coming out in focus. Um, sometimes it searches. Still no people coming, so this is great. There's a little thing coming right here. If I had my boots, I would be right here. I don't know if you can see that right there. That would be so cool. I'm going to step in the water. There's no way I'm going to make this happen. Ah! Ah! I knew it. I'll show you again the polarizer, the, the difference it makes right over here. Right over here. Now check this. Oh, that's nice. Check this out. Okay. Now you'll see in the top right corner the difference in these two, polarizer versus non-polarizer, whatever floats your boat. Yeah, let me go ahead and, and do one here that's, um, I'll go ahead and crank one to freeze the action. The, the whole goal of this one, the entire goal, I don't know if I can stand up straight, 
the entire goal of this one is to just show the uh, freezing the action. Okay, so let's see what we do here. All right, so that should have frozen the action. I don't like those type of shots, but others do. Yep, boots would have been awesome. Boots would have been awesome. So in this one, looks like I can stand right. <laughs> this is a 13 second exposure. That's why I'm leaving the image stabilization on because the water's rushing down here, so my guess is it's vibrating a bit. I'll go ahead and go one more vertical because I'm not sure what I got here. And then, uh, now you can see, well, it was showing the waterfall itself as being blown out when it pops back up here. Oh, this is my 12 second exposure. 13 seconds, something like that. Come on a long 13 seconds there we go uh, okay so we're done with that spot Let's see what else we can come up with here guys ah okay we're, we're, we're gonna set something up here and see if we can get something cool with the water coming in this direction again a wide angle lens would be awesome but you know you got a lot of versatility here with your 18 to 135 so we'll just take it wide open not worried about my level on this one. Okay, here we go. Did we come up with? Okay, pretty cool. Three seconds. And um, let's go ahead and go vertical. I'm going to do another one just to make sure. I love that this flip screen is invaluable, folks, for this sort of thing. Invaluable. If that's the proper word. Pretty sure it is. Okay, three seconds focused right on the water itself, the waterfall. All right, so very nice, very nice. What else do we want to get here? I mean, that's kind of cool up there. Let's see what we can get here now. We've got this, uh, this ledge and all this here. So again, a wide angle would be nice. So I need to, need to pick me up one of those. Yeah, I just think I'm uh, tapped out here almost. Get us a nice L shape going here. Whoops. Would not focus. There we go. Very nice with the leaves down there. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. Matter of fact, let me, uh, we're cranking our aperture all the way up. I believe we're about 32. I want to get this, uh, I want to get a good depth of field. Let's go ahead and go to three seconds just to get everything in there. No, let's go to five seconds. This would be one of those milky looking ones, but could be cool with the uh, bright colored leaf in the middle. Okay, so, so let's see what we get. There's so many more shots to be had here. Up there, over there. Crazy. Crazy. But I think we're going to call it a day here. Because I can only do so much. All right, guys, so that's going to do it for this video. Hope you were entertained. Hope you enjoyed it. And just have a little fun with the Pentax K70. You can have that fun, too. Very inexpensive camera. You can probably pick one up on eBay for less than 500 bucks. I do have a link down below. About 700 or so with that 18 to 135 lens from Amazon. Very good quality cameras. You want to check these out if you're looking for a tank, something for winter, something for, uh, for snow photography, or if you do get out into the wilderness a lot and in waterfalls and where it's all wet and your camera can fall into the water, things like that, I'd say pick up one of these uh, Pentax K70s and I think you'll enjoy it. Anyway, I do appreciate it, guys. Thanks for checking things out. The next Pentax K70 video will be a street photography video. Then the one after that, the fourth video, will be actually breaking down the camera, telling you everything um, that I know about the camera. By the way, that is a 24 megapixel camera, so we're not squimping on quality here. So the, uh, but I'll, I'll break it down, let you know all the details about the camera, all the pros, some of the cons, not a lot of cons, uh, just a lot of pros with that K70. I like it. I enjoyed it today. I'm going to enjoy it for a long time to come. And uh, so hopefully uh, you have one that uh, you enjoy as well and you'll enjoy the videos. 
So uh, let me know what you think, and I will have a podcast out next Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, if you're watching this in real time, live, not, well, not live, but the week it comes out. If you make a comment uh, on this video, then I will probably talk about you in the podcast. And the link to the podcast is also in the description below. It'll be, this would be probably podcast 10 or 11, something like that. So you might want to check those out if you leave a comment, which I hope you'll do. All right, guys. So until the next one, we'll see you then.